you knew the deal was basically done or imminent. Do you have any words for Harry to speak to him? No, I mean, he, he, he sent me a message and I kind of sent a message back. But, yeah, it was like, again, I, I don't think either of us were surprised by the outcome. And we've, we've been talking it all along anyway, you know. We, we've kind of, whether that's um, about his situation or about the football club, you know. I, the way I kind of treat these things is while they're here, they're, they're still part of the club, you know. I don't sort of isolate them or, or treat them differently because I know they're leaving, you know. So um, we've been having discussions along the way and... Um, so again, like it was, it wasn't really a, a surprise or, or something that you know um, either of us needed to sort of address with what's happened. And some fans were sort of getting a bit excited or hoping that there might be some sort of buyback clause in this transfer. Is anything you can reveal on that? Is there any chance that one day he could come back? To no idea, mate. I've got no idea about the details of the deal, um, but he'll definitely be back at Tottenham one day, in one capacity or another, and. You know, um, like I said, when when you have a career like he has at one football club, um, you're never not part of it. Put it that way. Matt. Yeah, I just wonder when it seemed like the deal was going to happen this morning. What the move was like in the dressing room, uh, amongst the other players, uh, whether Harry's had a chance to say goodbyes to anybody at all, or, or might he come back and do that? I mean, I, I, I don't really venture into the dressing room, mate. Uh, I'll leave that to, to the players. Or um, around the training ground. Yeah. yeah I, I found out really early in my career, mate, football clubs, players, they move on pretty quickly. You know, we, we like to think that, um, you know, that we kind of dwell on things, but we don't. There's no time to. You know, these players know that in sort of, 48 hours, we've got our first Premier League game. That's where their focus is. Uh, I'm sure Harry has reached out or will reach out at some point to, to all the playing group, um, you know. Uh, but, you know, the, he hasn't been in to sort of say his goodbyes or anything like that. Um, and, like I said, the mood is the mood you'd expect two days out from a season opener. The, you know, the guys are pretty focused on making sure we're ready. Matt? You said you've sort of known this from the first time you spoke to, to Harry. Have you sort of known this from the moment you took the job? Yeah, pretty much. Was it part of the conversation or did it not matter? Not, what do you mean, did it not matter? You want the job, the way Harry's going. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it's not part of the contract negotiations, if that's what you're asking, that I need certain players to stay. I mean, you, you kind of do your, your due diligence whenever you take a job, and hopefully I was well-researched enough to know what was going on in the background, and you have these conversations with people, and, um, you know, I think it was in the public arena about sort of the outcome. When a, when a player of Harry's stature is going to the last year of your contract, again, you don't need some deep investigative research to figure out what's going on so you know I kind of knew going into it that again this was going to be the more than likely the outcome. Do you understand the appeal for him of Jordan Yeah look again I'm reticent to, to get into other people's shoes mate because if people sort of did that for me I wouldn't be comfortable in people speaking for me. I, you know Harry's you know he's got his own circle of people that he would speak to about these things and and why he you know he's come to this decision in his life um, and his career and um, you know he's the best one to to explain whether I understand it or not is relevant because I, I don't have all the information he does you know it's easy for me to sit here and say well I would have stayed or I would have gone but I don't live his life I don't know what he sort of where he's at in terms of the same way, like I said, if, if people started making assumptions about me and my decisions about why I do things, I think it's it's unfair, so I wouldn't do that with Harry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Oh. Hello, Ange. Uh, my name's Michael Yakumi. I'm from the Greek Cypriot newspaper, Buddy Diaki, based in London. I mean, you left Greece with your family at the age of five and went to Australia. And how did you get into football? And finally, did you ever dream of being a Premier League manager? Um, thank you for that. Um, no, look, I'm, I'm very proud of my um, very proud of my roots. I've spoken about them extensively. Um, you know, I'm, 
I'm the son of an immigrant. We went halfway around the world and um, my parents made enormous sacrifices and uh, I wouldn't be sitting here without um, without them doing that. And, uh, you know, that uh, football has been the, the vehicle of, uh, you know, me allowing me to live my life and have the life I have and the beautiful family, beautiful family I have and the friends I have. Um, but that's on the back of, uh, you know, two parents who... Uh, basically uh, sacrificed uh, their own life for, for the betterment of their kids and it's not um, it's not a unique story it's uh, it's quite a common one so um, I'm forever thankful for that Ma Happy thank you thanks it's okay it's really <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it don't worry um, is there any element in terms of trying to look at this positively that taking the plaster off you and ripping the plaster off a little bit and suffering a bit of play, pain that, that could make yeah. something good out of it? Yeah, I, look, I, 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 mean, I, I get where you're coming from, but that's, that's, look, so that's, that's doing a great disservice to a guy who did some unbelievable things. Like, you know, you, you're kind of... There wouldn't be a, a manager in the Premier League or any club in the world that wouldn't want Harry Kane in their team. Like, that's the reality of it, you know. So you can't say that, you know, that because he's here, that's sort of stymied the club into having success. I just don't buy into that. I just think, you know, he's he's done what he's, he's utmost to try and have success at this football club and it hasn't worked for, for a number of reasons. What we do know about this game is that it's very, very, very rare that an individual will be the difference. It's usually the collective. So what that op offers us now, as you said, an opportunity to build a collective that that, that brings us success. Um, and within that context, you still want outstanding individuals. You still want the best players. That doesn't change. You know, it's not like you, you know, you you kind of dismiss someone just because he's been part of something that hasn't been successful. You know, that that might be because of other reasons rather than what he's trying to bring to it. Done. Just to, to follow up on that, Ange, that there is obviously going to be a, a kind of vacuum in, in the dressing room in terms of leadership and on the pitch in, in terms of goals. Do you see in a positive way you know, that being filled by, by other players stepping up and perhaps kind of emerging from Harry's shadow, as it, as it were? Well, potentially, like I said earlier, that's all you can do is create that space and then see what, what, what grows from there because, um, you know, that... There is sometimes that element of it where, you know, um, people maybe suppress themselves to a certain extent because they understand that there's, you know, a unique individual in the room that, that you know, has such great presence and, and, and is such a um, force on and off the field that having that space there maybe does. But there's no guarantee that does either, you know, that just... The opportunity is there, put it that way, as you said. And, and with all these things, there's, there's, there's opportunities. What you've got to try and do is what the great clubs do, the great organisations, is replace greatness with greatness. Now, how that comes about is not easy. You know, it's not easy, and that's, but that's what the big clubs do. You know, they find a way to, to sustain and maintain and grow um, even when the greatest you know, leave their doors. And over the years, I suppose, when, when Harry's been injured in the past, there's always been this debate about whether Son is a striker. Some of your predecessors made it very clear he wasn't a striker, I just thought he could play there. Do you think he could play through the middle, kind of you know, semi regularly for you? Do you see that being an option? Um, yeah, I don't see it. I, I wouldn't rule it out. I, you know, I, I've known Sonny for a long time and, and you know, watched his career develop. Um, there's no doubt he could play centrally in my mind, especially the way we play. I mean, again, you know, I think that's where the nuances lie is that different managers have different ways of setting up their team. And and in some teams, yeah, I could see where Sonny couldn't play as a, as a central striker. But the way we play and the way we're going to play, yeah, I definitely see him as an, as an option to play in the central area. And just one for Leeds, is it kind of how far away, how great is he? Yeah, no, it'd be, be a while for him, I think. Um, we just got to let him settle again. He's come halfway around the world. He's a young guy. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fairly different level. He's 
he's one we will invest in in the long term, but um, I wouldn't expect him to see any minutes over the sort of first part of the season. OK, Ed, we'll finish with this section with you, please. Yeah, I was just going to ask if you don't have to tell us what could you say to Harry your message just wish him all the best? Yeah, no, I'm not going to say, mate, but, yeah. And, and, and uh, I'm just interested in, in your role now with, with the boys that Harry's going to leave. How important is it you um, give them the platform to, to step up to it, its issue? Yeah, uh, you know, again, I, I didn't wake up this morning kind of trying to cultivate that. That's been happening all along. You know, hopefully, you know, obviously it's difficult for all you guys to, to, to see that because you're not here every day, but we, we've been trying to do that anyway. Like that, 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 like I said, it's, I guess, the finality of it all today kind of hits everyone and everyone's kind of going, what next, what next? And But this is not new for me. This is six weeks or five weeks into knowing that this was going to happen so we've kind of been cultivating that anyway um, in the way we've been going about things um, on and off the field so nothing really changes there okay and we'll end the embargoed section there and move on to the sunday section finally um rob yeah yeah we'll do it in here rob and james